How we doing? Good. It's Jenny Taft. I'm like good kind, and uh, this is the off season, episode one, I guess. So this is exciting. Episode two, maybe, or three. We've done it. We've done a couple episodes now. So. Uh, okay. Thank you. Jenny, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. So thank good you. to chat. So uh, first, we're on the Fox lot just after your show. Yes. Undisputed. I think everyone's kind of wondering, you know, you get up super early. Yes, I do. What, what's the routine like? Okay, alarm goes off at 310. It's never fun. And <laughs> it's really actually horrible every day. I would be lying if I said it was easy. You never get used to it. It doesn't matter how many times you wake up early. And I'm not really a morning person either, but you just kind of get in a rhythm. So I get up at 310, shower, I'm out of the house by 315, or 335, excuse me. So I try to maximize as much time as I can in the morning. Get here at four. We have a production meeting from four to five. Makeup from five to six, and then I'm seated at six fifteen. I do a first things first talk back, and then showtime. Very cool. So that's crazy. Three yeah. ten. Yeah, three ten every day. Every day. Never then, easy. What time do you What time do you go to bed? I try to go to bed by eight thirty nine. I mean, honestly, I say eight thirty. It's never eight thirty. It's because games are on, right? Like you're really? watching. If it's, you know, a West Coast basketball game, I'm really in trouble. That's a hard day. And sometimes you just can't watch the whole thing. I'll watch the, the rest in the morning, but um, nine is safe. And that's not enough sleep. So what's it like? Cause you, have to, you get up at 310 again. And like, if you miss games, you got to get to work, you know, at 430, you said, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then Skip is obviously well informed on his sports. Right? I don't think he misses anything. I okay. think he will sleep as little as needed just to make sure he can catch everything. And I mean, to be honest, I have to give Skip and Shannon so much credit. They are so prepared in what they do. And I read everything. That's kind of my, I don't know, that's what I always say. I'm never gonna be not prepared, right? So I try to read as much as I can about every story. I get a rundown the night before. So you do know the direction the show's gonna go in. And we have themes that carry over. So once you feel good about something, that might carry over to the next day. And really it's just being well read and watching games. I mean, that's what comes down to it, just being prepared. It's crazy. I, Cause for me, like I get, the day I got up at 6.30, <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah, I know. We'll see what, it, for I, yesterday I did the XFL Sunday night. So I slept, I didn't, couldn't do Undisputed. I didn't get back in time. I slept until 10 a.m. So when I have the time to sleep, I will sleep. Okay. So what, what how do you prefer, first off, you were just in Miami. Yes. Cause we just had the Super Bowl in Miami. so exciting, it was fun. So. Do you prefer East Coast or West Coast in terms of TV? I mean, I don't think you can even... I, TV wise, well, what do you mean? Like, like games? Would you, like working on the East Coast, would that oh. be easier? Uh, that's a good point. I think, yes, our show on the East Coast would be great. When we were in Miami, we met at 6 a.m., which was a lot better than meeting at 4 a.m. So, okay. sure, like there's pros and cons to that, but then those games are later on the East Coast too, right? Like some of those later games you'd be watching early here. So I don't know if there's really a perfect situation. <laughs> okay, so kind of shifting gears here okay. to, to just, you know, stay, staying on the undisputed track. Okay. Uh, I think everyone kind of wonders what it's like to work with Skip. Yeah, Skip is the, he's just, he's so good at what he does. Honestly, like it really impresses me every single day between the two of them, and I'm not just saying it, but the preparation that goes into it from both ends, the notes that Skip has prepared every single day, Shannon is the same. Shannon has a photographic memory. I mean, he remembers everything. So you tell him something, he'll remember in five years. Um, we'll Skip right here, by the way. is the kind of person that just every day is the most important show. And that has given me such great perspective in this world. And it's true, every day you're on air, every day matters way more than the last. And he just has this work ethic that truly I've never seen. I mean, it's incredible what he does and just how much he cares about the show and making it better and pushing all of us to be better. It's it's impressive. And he is who he is. He's good at what he, what he does because of that work ethic. Is his workout routine, is that not a myth? That's a real thing? He gets up it's a real thing, yeah. It's a real thing. And I have told him numerous times that I will not be joining him on the 2 a.m. workout train. Um, honestly, like, he looks amazing. Like, I'm impressed. Like, the guy is confident. I, I'm very impressed by him and he's going up against a three-time Super Bowl Hall of Famer. So <laughs> if he's feeling good, Shannon's feeling good. I mean, it's it's good TV. And so it's just, okay, I don't know how much you know about <laughs> Skip and the workout. Is he really getting up at two? And no, I really think what's he What's the is. deal? Gets up at two, I think he, he runs on the treadmill and okay. prepares for the show. That's that is his thing. And he watches like an early morning ESPN. He's curious what they're talking about. Like he is preparing and reading at 2 a.m. I think he leaves 
for our meeting at like, I don't know, we start at four, I think. Probably his house, he's not far, so like 345. So he's prepping for about two hours before the show already, before we get there. Just about watching games. Yeah. Okay. So, shifting gears now, actually. I feel like I'm not like Comic Coward. Shifting gears. What am I saying over here? Hey, it's good. <laughs> We're shifting gears. We're shifting. <laughs> Fifth gear. Um, so, you're from Minnesota. Okay. Yes. How did you get to where you are today? Um, I know that's obviously like kind of a verbose question. You can obviously answer that in a lot of ways. But, sure. Um, but really, like, how, how did you how do you end up in you know in the chair next to Skip and Shin? Ah, oh, wow. I feel like there's a lot of different decisions I made along the way to get to this point. But I think the biggest thing, and I try to remind people, I always believed in myself that I could do this, and I worked hard, and I treated people well along the way. I think. Like, at the end of the day, that's what hopefully is gonna matter in this world. I started as an intern at Fox Sports North in Minnesota, so I grew up in Minneapolis. There was um, a little booth we would set up called I Wanna Be a Sportscaster, and I would help them with all these different people that would come by and we'd do different videos. So just making connections from an early age was really how I got rehired at Fox Sports North after college. They remembered me from being an intern, and the timing of being at Fox Sports North coincided with the launch of FS1 when I was kind of looking for a bigger role and I think it just goes back to meeting people and making connections. I had a few FS1 connections who knew me from north and it, I got an opportunity to audition and since then it's just been slowly growing and I like to remind people to take jobs that you might not be familiar with. My first job here was covering motorcycle racing and it was the best job I ever did. So do something that you're not might not be comfortable with, it'll pay off. Why well, was it the best job you ever did? Because it put me so much out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I covered hockey my whole life, I played hockey, and I loved football, but I didn't cover it the way I do now. And when, you, when I got asked to cover motorcycles, I didn't even hesitate to say yes, but it was the most scared I've ever been before a live broadcast because I thought I can either make it and this is the start of something or I'm gonna really struggle here and I'm not gonna be able to do TV because you can learn anything and that's just I think what was so refreshing to me like if you're a good broadcaster if you're good at interviews you can cover anything and I loved covering Supercross one of the coolest I still miss it I miss a lot of the riders and um, if they're back in California soon I'm gonna go back okay we're going phones <laughs> All right, so you're from a, a small town in Minneapolis, outside of Minneapolis. Um, not that small, though. Not that small. Pretty, like, normal size suburb. Okay. Right, it's basically Minneapolis. Okay. Edina, known for their sports. Okay. How would you compare living in L.A. to, to Minnesota? Well, that's very true. That's a big difference. Yeah. Um, I think L.A. is kind of what you make of it, right? You can find your niche. In Minneapolis, but I love going back. The people are so nice. It's the best people in the world. And then, just when you're driving... The traffic is not bad, which I love. Whenever I go home, I'm like, this is so nice. You don't have to stress about driving. And I miss Minnesota just because I miss the people and I miss that it's such a sports family-oriented community, but I, I've loved living in LA. I live at the beach. It's just kind of heaven to go home every day. So I'm, I'm enjoying LA very much. If you could have your show anywhere else, where would it be? That's a really good point. Um, I love being in LA. But I mean, New York City would be fun. I've enjoyed, I lived in New York briefly after school and I loved it. I was just back for the dog show. And there's an energy to the city that I love, but I'm truly happy if Undefeated stays in LA forever. You're not leaving. No, I'm, I'm not leaving us. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave here. As long as no one makes me leave, I'd like to stay. I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of the blue sky. <laughs> exactly. Like, Big what is there to complain guy. about? Yeah. 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 Um, so, what's your favorite sports moment that you were covering <laughs> okay. or not? Either one. Oh, that's a very good question. But that you were at the game of. I have to say, the coolest moment I've witnessed, 2015 Women's World Cup. So I was on the field when they won, and I know they just recently won the World Cup again, but 2015, it was so incredible to be a part of it just because I was there. I had been the reporter embedded with the team. Carly Lloyd as a hat trick. The game was just, it was magic. Like it was, as a female athlete, I looked up to so many of those women. Abby Wambach was on the team. I always tell people I was more nervous to interview Abby Wambach than I've been to interview any other athlete because they were what I looked up to. So I think covering World Cups has been really special and I was at the Men's World Cup in Russia. I interviewed Kylian Mbappe in French. 
coolest thing. Wow, you know French? Oui, oui, je parle français. I don't know what that means. I have no idea. Yes, I speak French. And I went to a French <laughs> school in Minnesota, and my parents convinced me it would pay off. And they were right. So I got to do an interview in French after France had won the World Cup. I mean, there was nothing like it. Like, I'll always have that moment. So I guess some big soccer moments. Top my list. I mean, I barely speak English, so the fact that you speak French is beyond me. On peut pratiquer. We can practice. It's all good. You got it. Does Charlie speak French? No. Your brother, her brother's Charlie, by the way. No, the way. it's it's funny because my parents had thought about moving at the time that Charlie was starting kindergarten. We were going to move to Texas. Long story short, our family was too obsessed with hockey, so we didn't move. And uh, he went to the English-speaking school, which is great, and I was very jealous of him at the time, but now I think Charlie's jealous. Of my friend. So it all evens out. Pretty jealous. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried to learn Spanish four years. It's hard. See? But I learned at such a young age. It's just different. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. So, dog show. Okay. It's quick. How, how was it? Dog show, so cool to be around. These dogs are incredible. If only my dog could be, behave as well as the dogs are. It was kind of a big deal because. The standard poodle, Siva one, and Daniel, the golden retriever, was a crowd favorite. So it was kind of some drama. <laughs> but anyways, Siva one, the standard poodle, it was just such a cool event. And honestly, work the dog show if you can, because it's like no other event. It's super serious though, it's Very not. Very serious. This is the Super Bowl for them. I mean, this we are not joking around here. This is Westminster. This is real dogs. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Do you have a dog? I do. Yes, Otis. He's a Bernadoodle. Okay. He is adorable. Not ready for best in show, but he'll get there. <laughs> are you gonna? Are, would you like him to be in a, in a dog competition? Well, technically, he is a Bernadoodle, so he's a Bernice and a Doodle. Those are not standards for Westminster. I think he could compete in agility, which we'd have to work hard for that. So, <laughs> TBD. <laughs> agility. Yeah. My parents just uh, got a four-year-old bass hound. Oh, really? He could not compete in anything, honestly. Oh, that's so cute. No. That is from the hound group. Awful. Awful. I can tell you whatever you need to know about the hounds. I'm just kidding. Really? No. Okay. Move on. I, the dogs are out of my brain. I, that was last week. <laughs> how, how do you study, like, the night before? I mean, obviously, you don't have that much time to study because, you know, I'm, is someone in your ear during the yeah. show, would you, like, does the IFB come into play? Sure. I mean, there is a producer, and I had... I'd worked with a producer the last couple of years on the dog show. His name is Bernie Kim. He's an incredible writer. He works on a lot of NFL stuff here. And he and I are both in it together where, you know, he's quickly reminding me, hey, Jenny, don't forget, the Golden Retriever has never won Best in Show. So there's levels of you're working together with a team, but I do a lot of studying in terms of just knowing, you know, that the Terriers are the winningest, you know, group to win Best in Show. Like, you want to have the, the quick facts because you sometimes just need to be prepared to kill time and have space. Um, pronunciations, the French comes in hand. The bon basse go for bon dance. Like, you have to say it right, or you're, the viewers will, will see through it. So that's kind of the part of the study in the company. Dog show. Well, you'll get there. You'll get there. Yeah. I'll help. It's tough. That's the hound I can do. I can't yeah. do what you just said though. It's tough. Yeah, you know. <laughs> do, you, do you get nervous for something that's out of your comfort zone still or no? That's a good question. And I do get nervous in a good, I think in a very healthy way. I think nerves are good. I think nerves mean you care. I still get kind of those butterflies before live events. It's exciting. I think if you didn't, we probably wouldn't be doing this, right? Like, mm -hmm. There's a level of just... I love being on a sideline for football and you never know what to expect, you know, right before the game. I mean, I remember at the big house for the first time, Ohio State, Michigan, it's so loud and I feel so prepared. But in that moment, there's over 100,000 people watching and you just feel the energy. How can you not? So you do get some of those nervous vibes, but I think that also makes you perform. There's a level of that adrenaline that I feed off. What's the most intense event you've ever done? I think it's hard to top a World Cup just because of the fans and the noise and just the sport of soccer internationally, but Big House Michigan Ohio State is a pretty incredible moment. And I mean, I wasn't at the Super Bowl this year on the field. We were just on the speed it was there all week. I'd love to be a part of a Super Bowl one day. That's definitely a goal. I see it. One day. I one day. It. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I'm Trying. I don't know. <laughs> I feel it. No, for sure. I. I I see you down there with Chris Myers. One day. And Aaron, one day. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. All of us. You know? oh, everyone. And I love them. I love Aaron. I love Chris. Like, it's just, an, it's a crazy 
I look up to them because they've done it so many times and ways and it's never easy just owning the moment and the magnitude of it and I just worked with Chris on the dog show and they were talking about just how you handle working a Super Bowl and it's really incredible what they do so I look up to both of them a lot. What advice would you give to you know someone like like us in the off season? You know, we're 20, 23 through 25, I'm 24. What advice would you give to a young person aspiring to be you know, in your shoes? Okay, I'm trying to think back to when I started at Fox Sports North and I'm pretty sure when I came back for a marketing position, I wasn't sure it would lead to being on air, but I just wanted to get in the door. And I think I was 24, so I think technically you're already a step ahead of me. You're already here at Fox, no. that's a good sign. Okay. My advice would be take whatever job you can to get in the door work really hard and just kind of prove yourself. Um, you're gonna find ways to be on air. You can do this, you can be creative. Now I think with social media and the ability to just kind of create content, you can do it on your own and then you have something to show others, um, which I think people really wanna see now. So I would just say, get in the door, be nice, work hard, and just offer to help, volunteer, be at live events. Learn as many things as you can about the industry because those opportunities and the people you met along the way, it's gonna pay off. It really will. I have so many stories of someone remembering someone from when they were an intern or when they were just starting out. And it really, I really believe that that's how it works in this industry. Do you still like to go to games, by the way? Like as a fan, do you still like to go to games? Uh, I think, I'm trying to think back to the last game I've been to. Uh, actually, I went to a later game. Okay. I gotta see LeBron in action. That was fun. I had some family in town for the holidays and it was, just as cool as a fan to see him. I mean, I don't know if that ever gets old, right? And now I have to see Kawhi, Clipper game. We'll see. Okay, next. that's next. I gotta compare the, the two, yeah. We gotta get you to a Dodger game. You gotta go. I have been to a Dodger game. I did go to a couple playoff Dodger games and it was really fun. Okay. And it was great. I, to be honest, the worst part about going to a Dodger game is getting there. Yeah. In the traffic. Yeah. And, but I, I love the Dodgers. If you can hook me up, that'd be right. Jenny, we're going. <laughs> we're, we're making this happen. We'll get Charlie in there. Deal. Deal. Oh my God, it's a night for the ages. Uh, and then, uh, you know, lastly, baseball is obviously kind of back right now. People mm -hmm. are excited again. Yeah. Do um, you think the Mookie trade will kind of get people more excited about baseball again this season and, and in LA especially? I hope so. I mean, to be honest, I don't follow the Dodgers as much as I should, just considering we don't talk about it a ton on Undisputed with everything with the Astros, the drama. That has been obviously a big discussion. We talked about it today because Mike Trout came out and said some stuff. So I hope so. I mean, I hope that that whole scandal will not affect the game in a negative way. I think it'll be interesting how it plays out. But in terms of the Dodgers and Wookie Betts, the excitement I've seen just from social media, it feels like people are excited about it. So I'm in. I'm locked in. I'm ready to go. Okay, good. we got 37 days to locate. Good, day. we're good, we're wait. good. Okay, um, I think that's all the time we have. But wait, really quick. Yeah. BU. We got the BU connection oh, yeah. going on. Yeah. Go Terriers. Go Terriers. BU. <laughs> kind of on a Boston note. <laughs> yeah. Where's Tom Brady going? Oh, such a good question. I love Tom Brady, by the way. I love him. I really do. As a I guy. Really yeah, all, Personal. Every, every part of him. He's a cool love guy. Him. Well, I don't know, but it seems great. I've you never met him. You've never met him? No. Oh, okay. When would I have met Tom Brady? You're on the field. Tom Come Brady on. is like, although, yeah. good story. Did a story about Michigan, Ohio State this year for the big game. Reached out to Tom Brady he got back to me about, I reached out through his reps, but I wanted a quote about Michigan football and he got back to me. Wow. I mean, how cool is that? What did he say? Well, it was a quote about the feeling of running out of the tunnel and what it's like. Yeah. And he gave me this incredible, like, there's nothing like it. The noise, it's, if you, have you ever seen the Michigan tunnel? It's completely dark until the very end. It's really amazing. I'll send you what I get. Okay. Yeah, and it was yeah. just great that he found a way to get back to me. I mean, I felt really special that he Back out, so it was cool. Is Anyways, he, I don't know where he's going. Chargers, maybe. Yes, yeah. I heard. I heard potentially Oakland's Las Vegas. I don't think he's going to be in Vegas. No. I don't even today. Skip said something about the Cowboys if they dragging their feet with Dak. I mean, who knows? Then there was this crazy thought Skip had about him going to the 49ers because he's from there, and Jimmy Grapple might have been the issue that they didn't do well this Super Bowl. I mean, who knows? I just think it's a great story. Yeah. And I'm rooting for Tom, and but I don't think he's going to be back. Oh, really? No. I don't. Leaving our friends. Yeah. He's got something to prove. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Jenny, thank you so we'll much. We'll see. Thanks Phenomenal. for having me. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. Catch all your content at Offseason LA. Uh, Jenny, anything, anything else about the offseason? How do you feel about it? I feel great. Go be you. Let's go. Great. <laughs>